is News 3 Now, live at 4, moving forward. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Live at Four. It's a busy day for Vice President Kamala Harris as she made her way through Wisconsin this afternoon. And joining her acting Labor Secretary, Julie Su. We have live team coverage and an exclusive interview with Secretary Su only on three. But today's Madison visit marks the second time this year the Vice President has traveled to the Badger State. In January, she marked the anniversary of the Roe v. Wade decision in Waukesha. Leading our team coverage this afternoon, political reporter Will Kinney who joins us from the city's east side and will tell us about the vice president's tour of a bus facility today. Hey, Brady and Charlotte. Yeah, so that uh, facility right behind me here will eventually house uh, and be a maintenance place for city buses, but it's currently under construction, and that's why the VP toured it today. She met with construction workers inside, touting the importance of jobs and union labor. Now, the trip also coincides with a federal apprenticeship program the administration is announcing today. She says that it can help eliminate barriers for new workers. Apprenticeship programs for labor and, and union apprenticeship programs also pay their apprentices while they're in the program, which means that people don't have to worry about whether they have to borrow money in order to receive an education. Now, as we mentioned, uh, this is the second time just this year and the third time in a matter of six months that the VP has visited Wisconsin. If you remember back a year ago, the president actually visited up into Forest uh, right after his State of the Union address. Now, this kind of underscores how important politically Wisconsin is for this fall election. And we actually heard uh, Vice President Harris take a swipe at President or former President Trump, uh, who is now that Republican uh, presumptive nominee here. Uh, but for now, reporting from the city's east side, Will Keneally, News 3 Now. The vice president made a stop to speak with voters gathering at the WIS Dems office on the Capitol Square. Our Catherine Merck joins us there after the vice president addressed state Democrats in the last hour. Catherine? The Democrat voters that gathered here at the WIS Dems building were incredibly excited when Vice President Kamala Harris came out. And when she walked out, she addressed them as her neighbors. As Will was saying, she once previously lived here when her parents were working in the area. And that connection that she uh, inspired with the voters that were gathered here is going to be incredibly important in the upcoming election. As the vice president told people that this state was just a matter of a few thousand votes in the 2020 presidential election. Coming up tonight at 5 and 6 o'clock on News 3 Now, we're going to hear more about what the voters here exactly were looking to hear from the vice president and what they're saying is going to be important in that upcoming election. Reporting live in Madison, I'm Catherine Merck, News 3 Now. Thank you, Catherine. Joining Vice President Harris, Acting Secretary of Labor, Julie Su. In an exclusive sit-down interview, Secretary Su spoke with our Jalen Banks, who joins us now. And Jalen, she says her upbringing shaped the way she goes about serving our country. What can you tell us about that? Well, Secretary Su has ties to Madison. She was actually born here and lived here through her toddler years. Secretary Su is a first-generation American as both her parents immigrated from Asia. And she says her upbringing is what has given her the motivation to serve in this capacity. I am a big believer in the opportunities that America provides. I'm a big believer that, uh, you know, everybody you know, should have a shot, because that's my family story. You know, my parents came here, they didn't speak the language. Um, uh, you know, they themselves worked, uh, you know, minimum wage jobs. I'm a believer that the kinds of opportunity that good jobs provide change lives. I've seen it, I've lived it, and uh, it's something that I wake up every day fighting for so that um, everybody in America can have that. Now, Secretary Sue will reach the year mark in her position on March 11th. And in the second half of our newscast, I'll sit down with both Charlotte and Brady talking about my experience interviewing Secretary Sue. Protesters also greeted the vice president during her stop here in Madison, a demonstration held by a GOP group called Americans for Prosperity. Let's send it over to Brady, who has more response from state Republicans. Well, the Republican Party of Wisconsin hosted a news conference in response to the vice president's visit. On it, U.S. Senator Ron Johnson, Congressman Brian Stile, and Wisconsin GOP Chairman Brian Schimming. The GOP spokesperson on the call said they were there to discuss how the Biden administration's economic failures have impacted working families. They highlighted the administration's struggle with connecting to voters in swing states like Wisconsin. 
uh, Vice President uh, Harris is here on a rescue mission. If she has to come to the base of Democrat voters in Wisconsin, in my hometown of Madison, to try to rescue the fortunes of this ticket, they are in real trouble. I've said many times before. Coming up on Live at Four, Marquette Law School poll director Charles Franklin will dig deeper into those polling numbers. Well, let's check the first Warren forecast now with meteorologist Jacob Montesano. Hi, Jacob. Hey, Charlotte. It's another very nice day out here. We saw pretty much complete sunshine, and that continues at the moment. Current temperature right now in Madison, 51 degrees, and a lot of our area is in the 50s right now. Looking across Dane County, middle to lower 50s, up to 54 degrees in portions of the county. But zooming further out, there are a few locations even warmer. It always seems to be a little bit warmer towards uh, the Mississippi. River, where temperatures right now are up to 56 degrees in Prairie du Chien and Basquebel. But with the exception of the north, northeastern portion of our area, pretty much everyone uh, seeing 50s at this hour. Now, we also are seeing fairly calm winds, only up to around 15 miles per hour. Still a little bit breezy, 17 miles per hour in Janesville. That's the windiest spot. But overall, the winds certainly are not too bad. Now, looking at your evening forecast, we're going to continue to see a little bit of clouds develop with uh, temperatures uh, dropping from the 40s into the 30s before the evening is over and then overnight we'll see lows in the middle to lower 30s so still above average for this time of the year in the low temperature department and then highs tomorrow will be very similar to today we'll have those high temperatures in the lower 50s some areas may stay in the upper 40s and we also will see a little bit more cloud cover tomorrow now the forecast really kind of begins friday because it's going to be dry tomorrow but friday we are expected to see quite a bit of rainfall i'll talk more in detail about the timing of that coming up a little bit later. Nikki Haley is officially pausing her race for the White House. Coming up, the message she sent to the former president and the presumptive GOP nominee. Get an 11% rebate on your outdoor projects now at Menards. General purpose concrete mix is great for setting posts, patios, and walkways. Just add water, mix, and pour. Get an 11% rebate on all concrete mixes at Menards. Menards has a huge selection of concrete blocks that are ready to take home today. Classic patio blocks are only 99 cents each after 11% rebate. Visit your Menards today to get an 11% rebate on everything. Save big money at Menards. Like a bowl of cherries, life in Attic Angel is healthy and sweet. Our independent and assisted living lifestyles include newly renovated apartments, engaging social activities, and wellness support that is tailored to you. As time marches on, we promote the idea that life can always be a bowl of cherries. Attic Angel Community, the house that angels built. Americans are doing their best to get by, but with an uncertain economy and prices still rising, budgets are stretched thin. And Washington's new capital regulation is another bill Americans can't afford. Basel III Endgame will make loans, utilities, and groceries more expensive and make it harder to access credit. Families, seniors, farmers, and small businesses are already struggling to make ends meet. Washington needs to scrap Basel III Endgame and start over. When a crane collapsed during construction of a major league sports stadium, three workers lost their lives. Their widows called us. When maintenance workers were permanently injured by an industrial accident at a public utilities power plant, the seven injured workers called us. When a factory exploded, injuring dozens of workers, 18 victims, including all three families of men who lost their lives, called us. Because Wisconsinites know who to call when it's a must-win scenario. They call Habish, Habish & Rotier. National reputation, hometown service. This month, we're looking for 200 homeowners interested in getting a new fence. We're offering up to $1,000 off, plus an upgrade of up to 10 free solar caps. Our fences outlast wood three to one and are backed by our extensive lifetime warranty. Call now or visit the website for your new fence today. The Big Share is Tuesday, March 5th. This online day of giving hosted by Community Shares of Wisconsin is an easy way for you to support nearly 70 local nonprofits working on social and environmental justice. Donate now through March 5th at thebigshare.org. News Free Now and Vortex present the Spirit of Service, a tribute to those who've gone above and beyond in our community. Over the past few weeks, you've nominated a veteran in our community who's making a real difference. Now it's time for you to vote for the finalist. 
Visit channel3000.com, read their stories, and vote for the deserving finalist. The lucky winner will be announced on March 11th. The Spirit of Service Award, presented by Vortex. Former President Donald Trump is now all but certain to become the GOP nominee for president after nearly sweeping Super Tuesday states. His remaining rival, former UN Ambassador Nikki Haley, announced today she is pulling out of the race. And Nikki Haley made history as the first woman to win two GOP presidential primary contests, but it wasn't enough to slow former President Trump's march to the nomination. Haley, Trump's former UN ambassador, stopped short of endorsing him, though. Her campaign says there remains a large block of Republican primary voters expressing deep concerns about the former president. It's now up to Donald Trump to earn the votes of those in our party and beyond it who did not support him. And I hope he does that. CBS News exit polling from North Carolina shows most Haley voters are not committed to supporting the GOP nominee. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell endorsed Trump as the Republican nominee for president today. The move followed Nikki Haley ending her campaign. In his statement, McConnell says Trump has earned the support of Republican voters and therefore will also have his support. McDonnell and Trump have not spoken in more than three years after the senator blamed Trump for the January 6th attack on the Capitol. On the Democratic side, Congressman Dean Phillips, who was challenging President Biden, announced he is suspending his campaign as well, and he's endorsing the president. He recently won his appeal to appear on the Wisconsin spring ballot. The Obamas are making news. Former President Barack and former First Lady Michelle are teaming up with the History Channel for a new podcast based on America's Reconstruction era. The former first couple will take a deep dive into the years 1863 and 1873. The network announced an eight-episode podcast to explore the period's impact on the country. No word yet on the release date. And let's get a look at your first one forecast. Meteorologist Jacob Montesano is here. Hi, Jacob. Hey, Charlotte. Looking at the three things you need to know, it's going to remain dry for the rest of today and tomorrow as well. But rain is expected on Friday, plenty of it. And although temperatures are going to cool down a little bit for the weekend, we're still expecting them to stay above average. And that will continue throughout all of next week as well. So here's a look at your forecast for tonight. Once again, lows will be dropping into the 30s. Some areas may drop into the 20s. We also see a little bit more cloud cover compared to right now, but still seeing those temperatures above average for this time of the year. And temperatures tomorrow will be pretty similar to today, maybe a tad bit cooler for a few locations as some parts of our area may stay in the upper 40s. And once again, we'll see a little bit more cloud cover, but we are going to remain dry tomorrow. Now, Friday, that's when things will change. So looking at the forecast beginning Thursday night, we'll see some light sprinkles overnight. More consistent rainfall will move into the southwestern portion of the state very early Friday morning. And then after sunrise, the rest of our area will see that rain move into uh, southern Wisconsin. Now, once the rain starts, it may not stop for quite a while. We are going to see this rain kind of impact our area all day, especially during the late morning and early afternoon. It will get a little bit more broken up as we head into the later portion of the afternoon and also as temperatures cool down some of that made some of that rain may transition into snow especially for areas north of Madison uh, those areas near the Dells and Camp Douglas Watoma you folks may see that snow a little bit earlier in the day possibly up to a half inch maybe a full inch of accumulation but we're not expected to see a ton of accumulation with the snowfall since the snow will be very wet we may continue to see some of that snowfall into the evening hours and maybe some uh, light flurries will be hanging on around midnight, but by Saturday morning, all the precipitation looks to have cleared out of our area. And although we may see some clouds early, we'll see some sunshine by Saturday afternoon. Total precipitation could be over an inch for a few locations simply because it is going to be raining pretty much all day for a few areas on Friday. Now, we're not expected to see any thunderstorms, especially not any severe weather, but rain could get to moderate, maybe even some heavy levels at times, especially in the southwestern portion of the state where precipitation forecasts are expecting possibly over an inch. 
Now, temperatures during that time will drop into the middle 40s for Friday and the weekend, but then by beginning of next work week, we could see, we could see those temperatures back in the 60s and each and every day still well above average since the average high is right around 40. So plenty of rain for Friday, but we are going to be dry throughout the weekend and into the first half of next week as those temperatures rise into the 60s. Now we have another chance of rain for Thursday and Friday of next week as temperatures look to cool back down again, but still remaining above average. So each and every day of the 10 day forecast is expected to be above average and most days uh, through next Wednesday will be dry with the exception of Friday, but Friday is going to be almost a complete washout. As I mentioned, it could be raining all day, but should be dry by uh, the afternoon hours or should be sunny by the afternoon hours on the on Saturday and then completely sunny for Sunday and Monday. So maybe not quite as good this weekend as it was last weekend, but mm -hmm. still dry and sunny. And the beginning of next work week is going to feel like April, uh, considering the average high. Uh, you don't get an average high of 60 until you get to April, mm -hmm. and it's going to possibly hit uh, 63, 65 degrees those two days. We just slept through March, I guess. <laughs> yes, I guess so. <laughs> still not the warmest day so far this year, though, as we've hit 70 before. Thank right. you, Jacob. Thank you. <laughs> Well, a second man is now arrested for his involvement in the December shooting of a 17-year-old in Monona. Monona officers arrested a 27-year-old Chicago man at the Dutch Mill Park and Ride in Madison Tuesday night. Investigators say the suspect is facing charges of being a party to an attempted homicide. The 17-year-old survived the shooting. Right now, UW police are investigating an alleged assault from over the weekend. Two students told police they were walking near the intersection of Linden Drive and Observatory Drive Sunday night when a group of men followed them. As the students attempted to talk to the group, some of the men began punching them. The victims were able to get away. Anyone with information about this is asked to call UW police and that phone number is right there on your screen. It is 608-264. 2677. A 76 year old man is in the hospital following a crash south of Beaver Dam. According to the Dodge County Sheriff's Office, as the man traveled east on County Highway DE yesterday, he attempted to cross Highway 151. That is when another car driven by an 18 year old crashed into his. Emergency responders flew the 76 year old man to UW Hospital with what is being described as life threatening injuries. The 18 year old suffered non life threatening injuries. The crash remains under investigation. A Wisconsin appeals court says regulators must develop PFAS restrictions before mandating cleanup. Today's ruling means environmental regulators can't force landowners to clean up pollution from the so-called forever chemicals without first implementing specific limits on contamination. The decision all but eliminates the DNR's authority to unilaterally mandate polluters and landowners report and clean up PFAS contamination in groundwater. If the decision stands, the DNR will now wait for legislators to impose groundwater limits on PFAS through state law or an administrative of rule. Attorney General Josh Call says the DNR will ask the state Supreme Court to review the decision. Well, you know, there are only two games left in the regular season for the Wisconsin mm. men's basketball team. Where has the time gone, right? <laughs> well, first on the slate, the Badgers play host to the Rutgers Scarlet Knights tomorrow night. And Wisconsin is looking for revenge from their loss back in February at the rack. The month of February was not really kind to the Badgers, mm. going two and seven in the month and falling out of the top four in the Big Ten standings. Yet the double bye for the Big Ten tournament isn't completely out of the picture. So if the Badgers look to make a run at the right time, they will need a sense of urgency. Got to go now. There's not much time left. We got to soak in um, as much opportunity as we can because I know the four years fly by whether you're a freshman or sophomore and now that I'm in my final year it, ha it, it really has flown by. The Badgers are back in action tomorrow night for their final home game of the season. Tip off is at six o'clock and that game will be on Big Ten and don't forget to tune in to the Wisconsin Huddle Show Friday nights at 630 right after News 3 Now at 6. Well, we are getting closer to finding out who the winner will be of our Spirit of Service campaign. Up next in the 608, Josh Spreider will introduce us to one of the five finalists when Live at 4 returns.
We spend a third of our lives sleeping. Shouldn't we try to get the best sleep possible? That's why Denver Mattress is all about that sleep life. And during the four-day super sale, the more you buy, the more you save. Save a hundred bucks on every thousand you spend. Check out the Summit Firm for only $299.99 or save $300 on any Telluride. Plus, four years no interest, no down payment, and free shipping. Improve your sleep life one night at a time, only at Denver Mattress. The easiest way to get the right mattress. I'm Jonathan Lawson, here to tell you about life insurance through the Colonial Pen Program. If you're age 50 to 85 and looking to buy life insurance on a fixed budget, remember the three Ps. The three what? The three Ps. What are the three Ps? The three Ps of life insurance on a fixed budget are price, price, and price. A price you can afford, a price that can't increase, and a price that fits your budget. I'm 54 and was a smoker, but quit. What's my price? You can get coverage for $9.95 a month. I'm 65, retired and take medications. What's my price? Also $9.95 a month. I just turned 80 and I'm on a fixed income. What's my price? $9.95 a month for you two. If you're age 50 to 85, call now about the number one most popular whole life insurance plan, Available through the Colonial Pen Program. Options start at $9.95 a month. That's less than 35 cents a day. You cannot be turned down because of your health. No medical exam, no health questions. Your acceptance is guaranteed. And this plan has a guaranteed lifetime rate lock. So your rate can never go up for any reason. Options start at $9.95 a month. Plus, you get a 30-day money-back guarantee. So call now for free information, and you'll also get this free beneficiary planner. Use this valuable guide to record your important information and give helpful direction to your loved ones with your final wishes. And it's yours free, just for calling. So call now for free information. Call 1-800-914-3131 for your free information and your free gift. That's 1-800-914-3131. There's no risk or obligation. 1-800-914-3131. Call now. Here's your parachute. Packed it myself. Certain it's okay? Mm-hmm. Are you foreign print certain? Certainty matters. Like the certainty of congratulating coworkers or saying thank you for being a customer with promotional products from 4imprint. Our expert team is dedicated to making your satisfaction a certainty. Packed it myself. Land the perfect products at 4imprint.com. 4imprint for certain. In the 608, we are officially one week away from announcing the winner in our Spirit of Service campaign. Josh Spryder is introducing us to the top five veteran nominations all week long. Our partners in this campaign, Vortex Optics, narrowed the 100 nominations in the Spirit of Service down to five. And this week, we've been meeting the candidates who have a chance to win that $5,000 cash award. John Hofer's story unfolds with courage and compassion. I thought it was just a great honor that my son nominated me. And then when I started seeing the other veterans, the five, I'm like, wow, this, this is incredible. Every veteran uh, nominated is just done great things for our veterans in the community. John Doc Hofer has truly done it all. He volunteered for the draft at age 18, serving about two years in Vietnam as an Army combat medic with an infantry platoon. Then back here at home, Doc founded Hall of Heroes at Madison Veterans Hospital and helped establish it at Toma and Seattle's VA hospitals. John fought for funding for veterans in financial need, helping them obtain their well-deserved benefits, while also requesting Madison Metro provide free bus service to disabled veterans. Working with both the Army and Navy Reserve, Doc provided dental care for several years. He also established Teed Up for the Troops Community Golf Tournament, raising funds for local veterans and their families while deployed with the Guard and Reserve. Hofer is a decorated combat veteran, awarded the prestigious Army's Combat Medic Badge, the Bronze Star Medal, and the Navy's CB Combat Warfare Pin, as well as other decorations. I think I'm just so lucky that uh, I survived and uh, had some close calls, and I'm like, uh, I'm happy to give back because I appreciate life. Uh, it's been good to me, even raising triplets, and... Uh, 
getting into the VA. I never thought I'd work with them. And then giving back to veterans while I was there, uh, starting the Hall of Heroes. And just, they are so honored when they're remembered 50 or 75 years after they were awarded uh, medals for heroism or valor. I asked John what he would do with the $5,000 if he were to win the Spirit of Service. John tells me he would send the money to wounded warriors or tunnels to towers, along with other veterans charities he continually supports. Again, John is one of just five people you can vote for to receive the Spirit of Service Award. We are meeting a new candidate and hearing from them every day on News 3 Now this morning, this week. Right now, you can vote for your favorite nominee at channel3000.com slash contest through Friday, March 8th. One vote per day per email. You can also go to the story on our website and click on the Vote Now link. I'll be announcing that winner live next Monday, March 11th, right here on News 3 Now this morning. Moving forward in the 608, Josh Breider, News 3 Now. It's been great meeting all of these veterans. It truly has been. Seeing little glimpses of their lives, mm -hmm. like the photos mm -hmm. and the boots and everything. Triplets? Yeah, I like how we just threw that out there. <gasps> yeah. No big deal. No big deal at all. <laughs> well, our coverage continues on the vice president's trip to Wisconsin today. Our Jalen Banks spoke to acting Labor Secretary Julie Sue, coming up only on three. Marlene is proud to celebrate 120 years as a family-owned and operated lumber yard in Wisconsin. Throughout the years, Marlene Lumber and Homeworks has expanded its product lines to include cabinetry, windows, doors, and much more. Our showrooms in Janesville and Madison are state-of-the-art. They're ready for you to see the many ways your building or remodeling vision can come to reality with the help of our in-house designers. Marlene Lumber and Homeworks, for all your building and remodeling needs. Marlene.com, celebrating 120 years. This is me, and this was my stubborn body fat. My name's Adrian, and Sonobello changed my life. Sonobello is America's number one cosmetic surgery specialist, and they permanently removed my body fat in just one visit. After having two kids, my body, it changed a lot. I tried everything to lose the fat, but nothing seemed to work. Sono Bello's board certified surgeons use micro laser technology to safely target and remove your diet resistant fat cells permanently on your stomach, back, chin, and more. I've seen such dramatic results. My tummy is gone, my double chin is gone, and my hourglass shape is back. This was the mommy makeover that I deserved. Schedule your free, no obligation consultation and find out how you can get $250 off instantly. Call 1-888-357-3263 or go to sonobello.com. Welcome to Badgerscape Design and Landscape. We offer a full range of landscaping services from design to maintenance. Our professional team is dedicated to meeting all your landscaping needs. Call us at 608-295-1446 or visit badgerscapedesignandlandscape.com. Salon Pass Lidocaine Flex, a super thin, flexible patch with maximum OTC strength lidocaine that contours to the body to relieve pain right where it hurts. And did we mention it really, really sticks? Salon Pass, it's good medicine. He sent me to. Watch the Bucks on broadcast TV when they battle with the Lakers on your new local home for select Bucks games. Don't miss a second of the action when LeBron and the Lake Show duel with Giannis and the Bucks. It's a clash of the titans. Bucks, Lakers, on your new local home for select Milwaukee Bucks games. Friday at 9 on WISC TV3. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. You're watching News 3 Now, live at 4, moving forward. Our team coverage on the Vice President's visit to Wisconsin continues at the top of the 4.30 half hour. We have an exclusive interview with Acting Labor Secretary Julie Sue, only on 3. But first, our weather words today are rain on the way. But it looks so nice all know. right now. Who Let's knew? keep this. Let's go out to Jacob on the weather patio with a look at our first Warren forecast. Jacob? 
Yeah, right now temperatures and conditions are beautiful and tomorrow is going to be a very nice day as well. Let's take a look outside at Platteville showing completely clear skies there as well. If I look up here, can't even see a cloud in the sky. Now that won't be the case tomorrow, but the rain that is for Friday and I'll talk about that a little bit later. Here's a look at the current temperatures right now in the lower 50s across Dane County. A few other parts of our area closer to the middle and even upper 50s, especially off to the west and pretty much our entire area with the exception of portions of Dodge County in the 50s at this hour and tomorrow we may see a lot of 50s as well. Winds are also pretty calm and we keep talking about, you know, it's above average. Well, here's a look at what the average is average high this time of year is 39 degrees today we saw a high of 52 and just last sunday we saw a high near 70 so we have continuously been above average and we're also gonna continue to be above average going forward uh, the mild weather is not going anywhere now here's a look at the evening forecast temperatures will drop into the 40s by 6 p.m right around 40 by 8 and then closer to the middle 30s by 10. we'll see a little bit of cloud cover overnight as lows will drop into the middle to lower 30s and that will keep the temperatures from dropping into the 20s so still above average in the low temperature department but tomorrow will will we'll still be above average as well with highs in the upper 40s to lower 50s a little bit more cloud cover but staying dry but that will change friday as we are expected to see quite a bit of rainfall but not a lot of thunderstorms i'll talk more in detail about the timing of them coming up a little bit later well, at another stop in Madison, the vice president was able to meet with voters in an intimate setting, taking pictures and shaking hands with Dane County residents. Our Catherine Merck joins us after speaking with individuals who met the vice president today, and she joins us now. Catherine. As the vice president addressed individuals at the building behind me here at the WIS Dems office, she greeted the people there as her neighbors, which actually has some truth to it. Back in uh, when she was five years old, she actually lived here as her father worked for the university and her mom worked for a hospital system here. And that connection that she made with those people in the crowd is going to be very important in the upcoming presidential election. As she addressed the crowd, she told us that last presidential election in 2020 was just coming down to a matter of thousands of votes. And so even though it was a small, intimate crowd in that building, she said if everybody there let their friends and family know about the dire energy of this upcoming election, it would make for a successful campaign on her end. We're going to speak to some of those voters tonight on News 3 Now at 5 and 6 o'clock. Make sure to stick with us there. Reporting live in downtown Madison, I'm Catherine Merck, News 3 Now. Well, accompanied by Vice President Harris was Acting Secretary of Labor, Julie Su. Our Jalen Banks joins us now sharing his exclusive conversation with Secretary Su. Well, Jalen, so what was your biggest takeaway from this interview? I would say, you know, the Vice President and Secretary Su, they're here, you know, they're touting the different things that uh, the Biden administration is doing with the workforce and with, with unions as well as, you know, the new apprenticeship things that they have going forward in our state and throughout the country. But my biggest takeaway was I felt as if, yes, she's a part of, you know, this administration, but her work is genuine. Um, her mother was a union worker. Um, her mother and both her father at different times, they worked multiple jobs. And so it truly is her mission to, you know, give the average American and just Americans in general opportunities at a better life. Mm -hmm. And we just heard about Vice President Harris's ties to Madison, but yeah. Secretary Sue also has some ties to Madison. What are those? So as I mentioned earlier, she was born in Madison. Uh, she lived in Madison, you know, throughout her toddler years because her father is actually studied at UW Madison. And so while he was studying at the university, again, that's when her mother uh, had worked multiple jobs. And so uh, she said it was an integral time for her and her family because it was the foundational years uh, with her parents being immigrants and coming over here and, you know, trying to reach a better life. So. Okay. So tonight at 5 and 6? Yes, tonight at 5 and 6 we'll do a deeper dive into my interview with her. And then as well as this evening, we're going to put the entire interview up on our website at channel3000.com. We right. look forward to seeing that. All right, sounds good. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes. Well, today, State Senator Joan Balwig announced that she is running for re-election for the 14th Senate District. That district includes Adams, Columbia, Dane, Juneau, Sauk, Richland, and Vernon counties. Balwig was first elected to State Senate in 2020 after beating Democrat Joni Anderson in a landslide. She currently serves on the Joint Finance Committee and is the vice chair of the Majority Caucus in the State Senate. Today, Governor Evers signed a bill funding a new engineering building at UW-Madison, along with the fund 
funding for that new building. The bill will also provide money to renovate Cronsage, Humphrey, and Jorn's residence halls at UW-Madison. UW-Madison leaders had been pushing for funding for a new engineering building for months now with Democrats in the state legislature, including $197 million for the building in the state's budget. Legislative Republicans on the Joint Finance Committee rejected that proposal. In December 2023, the UW System Board of Regents narrowly approved a deal with the legislature to secure the money. Well, for those of you who would like to learn more about bear hunting, here's the perfect opportunity for you. In the upcoming Learn to Hunt Bear program, the DNR is looking to provide learning opportunities and outdoor experiences for new hunters. Participants must be at least 10 years old and don't have any experience hunting bears. Applications will be sent out by May 1st, and participants will be informed of their applications by June 1st. Wall Street rebounded today as the Fed hinted it wasn't changing interest rates anytime soon. The Dow Industrials gained 75, the Nasdaq gained almost 92, while the S&P was up 26. Nine years after a police officer shot and killed Tony Robinson on Williamson Street, Robinson's family is honoring him. We'll show you a brand new mural dedicated to Robinson and how his family is continuing to call for justice. percent rebate on everyday essentials now at Menards. Save on your favorite cleaning supplies from Procter & Gamble. They deliver quality products from brands you can trust like Dawn, Tide, and Bounty. Get this 42-pack of Tide Pods for just $10.99 after rebate. Keep your devices powered with Energizer Max batteries. They deliver consistent performance and have lasting power. A 16-pack of AA and AAA batteries are $9.99 each after 11% rebate. Save big money at Menards. Hello, I'm Tommy Van Ness from the Tommy Van Ness Realty Group. For over a decade, thousands of people have turned to Tommy Van Ness Realty to buy or sell their home. Because we are more than your realtor, we're your partner. If you list with us and take advantage of our extensive marketing, everyone will know your home is for sale. The Tommy Van Ness Realty team is working hard for you. Call Tommy Van Ness today at 608-395-7375. Why settle for less? Call Tommy Van Ness. Protect your home with a reliable generator from Generac, the industry leader. Richland Home Power offers expert installation and a range of power solutions for your home. Visit us at Richland Home Power, a Generac authorized dealer. Here's your parachute. Certain it's okay? Are you foreign print certain? Certainty matters, so congratulate coworkers or say thank you with promotional products from 4imprint.com. 4imprint for certain. The story of Scott the Window Guy starts with the crack of a bat and a broken window. <laughs> Little did I know, Mom actually wanted her windows replaced. I'm Scott the Window Guy from AHT Wisconsin Windows. For the past 50 years, we've been replacing windows in Wisconsin with a 50-year warranty and a 10-year glass breakage guarantee to protect you from kids like me. Get free installation on any door or window purchase at scottthewindowguy.com. We have team coverage of Vice President Kamala Harris's visit to Madison. Hear her plans for winning the state against Donald Trump. Our nice weather is about to end coming up at 5. I'm tracking when you can first expect the rain to start, when it's at its heaviest, when it ends, and how much you can expect. And ahead at 6, Jalen Banks sits down for an exclusive interview with the Secretary of Labor. Discover her Wisconsin roots and her vision for the working class's future. That's tonight only on News 3 Now at 6. Welcome back. Today marks nine years since Madison police officer Matt Kenny shot and killed Tony Robinson during a check person call at his home on Williamson Street. Well, tonight Robinson's loved ones and other Madison community members are gathering to unveil a brand new mural honoring him and they're continuing their calls for justice. Brain Ross joins us now from McPike Park where that mural dedication is set to start soon. Braden? 
That's right, Brady and Charlotte. In just about an hour, we're expected to hear some speakers and some family members gather and see them dedicate this mural to Tony Robinson. You can see behind me what this mural look like, looks like. It might look familiar to you. It was actually first painted on State Street back in 2020 when all those uh, businesses were boarded up over there. But I was quick to, I just talked to uh, Tony Robinson's grandma here, and she was quick to remind me that this has been a long fight for justice, but it is nowhere near over. So let's recap some of what that fight has looked like. Now, back in 2015, the Dane County District Attorney never actually brought charges against Kenny when the incident first happened because he said he believed Kenny's actions were a lawful use of police force. In July of last year, a Dane County Circuit Judge dismissed a petition by Robinson's family asking the court to bring charges against Kenny, even though the DA wouldn't. Matt Kenny remains employed with the Madison Police Department, but Robinson's family is still working to change that. Again, we're expecting to hear as this event kicks off later what they plan to do next, what's next in this fight for justice. We'll keep you updated on what we learn tonight on News 3 Now at 10. For now, reporting live in Madison, Brayden Ross, News 3 Now. And if you would like to attend tonight's event, remembering the life of Tony Robinson Jr., here is the agenda. Like Braden said, people will start gathering at McPike Park at 5 o'clock. There will be a lantern send-off, followed by a walk to 1126 Williamson Street, where Robinson was killed, and ending with a moment of silence. News 3 Now will be bringing you live coverage at the top of the 5. Super Tuesday pushed one Republican candidate closer to the nomination and another Republican candidate is calling it quits. Charles Franklin, director of the Marquette Law School poll, joins us next to break down those results and talk about what's next. No more waiting to see a general surgeon. Stoughton Health can see you within a week. We accept over 160 insurances, including Dean Health Plan and Quartz. Ask for Dr. Aaron Schwab, board certified general surgeon. Learn more at StoughtonHealth.com. Fjords has been crafting beautifully designed functional furniture since 1941. Every aspect of Fjords furniture has been carefully engineered to create a higher level of relaxation. Visit the Century House today and view our extensive lineup. Experience the unmatched relaxation you can only achieve in Fjords Furniture. Relaxation made beautiful. Visit the Century House at 3420 University Avenue in Madison or online at centuryhouseinc.com. Before USA insulation, one room was colder than the other. It was harder to keep the temperature at a, at a good level. At that point, we realized that we needed to check into the walls and see what was going on. It's an older house. After USA insulation came in and, and put the foam in, we noticed almost immediately the following month was about a $40 decrease in our bill. The following month after that, it was around $50, $55. So we started seeing results almost immediately after they put the insulation in. USA insulation. I'm Clint. I'm Phil. Saving you big time money on honey and tea. 12 ounce bargain bee honey, just two for five dollars. Or 20 count bigelow tea, two for five dollars. I can run the hot, hot prices on honey and tea. Bargain bee, two for five. Bigelow, also two for five. Enjoy honey and tea season and save lots of money. Better, better products, products, better prices, better, better service, service because we're employee owned. It's We are Dane County. We are Madison, McFarland, Sun Prairie. We are Wanakee, Stoughton, Middleton, Deerfield, and everywhere in between. We are committed to being unique in supporting the value when families share the memories of family and friends at the loss of a loved one. We are Crest Funeral and Cremation Service, more than just a funeral home. We are the people you know and trust to help families before, during, and after the loss of a loved one. Learn more at CrestFuneralService.com. The world's largest consumer bicycle show, Bikerama, is this weekend at Madison's Alliance Energy Center. Spring is coming, so is the 28th annual Bikerama, and admission is free. Dozens of factory reps for all the major brands will be on hand to answer your questions about the new 2024 model. All at the lowest prices of the year. Test ride e-bikes on huge indoor test tracks. Clothing, helmets, parts, and accessories up to 90% off. Half price inner tubes. All bicycles include free local service. The 28th annual Bikerama at Madison's Alliance Energy Center. This weekend starts Friday at noon through 5 o'clock Sunday. The acid reflux felt like just the worst burning in your throat that you can imagine. It's almost like a fire in your throat. The Lynx procedure was one of the best decisions I've made. It has changed my life and the burning is gone. 
Should we go to New Orleans today? I would love to. I'd love a beignet. Oh, 75 degrees. We'll get a beignet. <laughs> we'll have some coffee. We'll go out in the French Quarter. Oh, I would love that. We'll take Charles with us. Oh, good. Okay. Plus one. <laughs> Well, Nikki Haley drops out of the presidential race, which is looking more and more certain to be a Biden versus Trump rematch, and the vice president is visiting Madison today. And that sets the stage for today's visit with Charles Franklin, the director of the Marquette Law School poll. I feel like this is like rinse and repeat, mm. deja vu. It's, What's we've happening? We've been here before. It is. Hopefully this will be the last rinse and repeat before the <laughs> general election. But, um, you know, uh, Haley took 26% of the vote, averaged over the states yesterday, but Trump got 71%. Uh, that's a not trivial dissent group within the party, uh, but it certainly shows Trump's dominance, and 71% was more than he'd been averaging in the earlier primaries. On the Democratic side, uh, Biden got 89%, but 10% voted uncommitted in the states where that was an option. So there's a little bit of a creakiness on the Democratic side. Do you think that Haley's going to find a way to magically forget everything negative that she said about Trump and then all of a sudden come out with an endorsement? Well, it's certainly been the pattern on the, in the Republican Party. Uh, today, Mitch McConnell, the Senate majority, minority leader for the first time, endorsed Trump this cycle after being very reticent and the two not speaking. For years. For years, mm -hmm. for years, not since January 6th. Right. Um, but it is normal for people within a party to come together and unite behind the nominee. I wouldn't be surprised to see Haley eventually do that. I don't know how soon or how late. Um, today she said it was up to Trump to win over her supporters, not up to her to endorse or push them in that direction. So I, I, there's a little bitterness there to, to linger for a while. We'll see if it changes in the next few months. Well, even though Haley did not have a Super Super Tuesday, um, with her number of the votes, does that, can we deduce anything about Trump going forward to the general? Is that a problem for him then? It's a bit of a problem. What we see in the exit polls and in our Marquette polls is something like 20 or 25 percent of Haley's supporters say they would vote for Biden in the general. Mm -hmm. She's getting 20 or 25 percent of the vote, so calculate that through, and it means about 5 percent of Republicans crossing over for Biden. Trump supporters are unanimous in right. sticking with Trump, of course. So you, nobody wants to give up 5 percent of their party. On the other hand, Biden is losing 7 or 8 percent of Democrats to Trump right now. That's why we've got eight months of campaigning left to bring partisans home and maybe win over the handful of independent and moderate voters that are still out there. So it's just going to be a matter now of boots on the ground and trying to convince people. Massive organization in the six swing states, of course, including us. Uh, lots of advertising. And since we're pretty certain what the matchup is, a lot of that campaign may run for the next eight months instead of waiting to summer to ramp up. So. Stay tuned to see how many people are knocking on your door with uh, canvassing. Well, and even though Dems gave uh, the Biden campaign a little bit of a bruising, could that campaign use that to its, its advantage? I think a lot of that comes from what's going on uh, with the Palestinian ceasefire. Um, could they hear this message sure. and use it to their advantage? I, I think to the extent that we get a ceasefire, the Biden administration would take credit for some of that. Say, look, we were working for this all along. Also, I think the if you look at the people that are unhappy with Biden within the Democratic Party, people who are pro-Palestinian, young people, um, people who don't think Biden's been progressive enough, very few of those people are Trump supporters. So the question for them is going to be come home to Biden even if you don't like it, or go third party or skip the top of the ticket. Um, with the Haley voters, it's a little more unclear about whether they can really be convinced to support Trump. How many of them might skip Trump, not vote? How many, that 5% I was mentioning, actually cross over for Biden? So there are fractures in both parties. Looks a little bit bigger on the Republican side right now. But we have it a 49-49 tie in the state in our last poll. So. Yeah. Still looks like a, a nail biter. A lot can happen in oh, eight yeah. months. And will. Yeah. Hey, we'll be seeing a lot of you. I hope so. <laughs> All right. Always fun. Charles, Thanks for having thank me. Thank you here. very much.
Well, let's get an update on our first foreign forecast now. Here's J uh, meteorologist Jacob Montesano. Jacob. Thanks, Brady. Here's a look at the temperatures. Um, I believe we have, uh, uh, excuse me, never mind. I thought there was a problem with the graphics. Never mind. Here's a look at the three things you need to know uh, today. Uh, the rest of today and tomorrow will remain dry. As we go into Friday, though, that's when we're going to see our next chance of rain, and it looks like it will rain throughout much of the day on Friday, but even after the rain showers, temperatures will be above average. So here's a one final look at the forecast for tomorrow. We'll see a little bit more cloud cover, but temperatures will be very similar. Highs will be in the upper 40s to lower 50s, maybe a tad bit cooler, but we're still going to be dry. Looking at Friday, though uh, this is actually starting Thursday night. The rain will move in very early Friday morning for the western portion of our area, especially in southwestern Wisconsin. And then during the morning hours after sunrise, rain will spread out to the rest of our area. And once it starts, it will likely not stop for a good portion of the day, especially during the morning and early afternoon. It'll get a little more broken up in the later portion of the afternoon. But as temperatures cool down, some of that main rain may transition into snowfall, starting in the northern counties and then moving further south. Now we aren't expected to see a lot of us of snow accumulation. We could see maybe up to a half inch, maybe a full inch for areas far to the north as it will snow there a little bit longer, but still the snowfall will not be a huge issue. Some snowfall may linger into the evening, possibly even into around midnight, but we will be dry by Saturday morning. So looking at the total precipitation, because the rain is expected to last for quite a while, we could see over an inch of rain in the southwestern portion of the state, but much of our area will see about a half inch at least, if not more. The further north North you go, the less likely you will see a lot of rain kind of near Camp Douglas and the Dells. Not going to see quite as much rain there, but for uh, Dane County, areas to the south and also southwest, we'll see the most rainfall. Now, temperatures during that time will drop a little bit for the weekend, but still remaining above normal. The normal high for this time of year, 39. It will warm up to 43 by the end of the 10-day forecast. Tuesday and Wednesday of next week, we're going to see those temperatures possibly in the 60s again. And we also aren't expected to see rainfall after Friday because it will clear out by early Saturday and will enter our area after sunset on Thursday. So outside of Friday, we are going to see dry conditions each and every day through Wednesday with another chance of rain by Thursday and Friday of next week. Now is the best time to buy new Champion windows because when you buy two, you get, get two, two free. free. Hurry, Champion's buy two, get two free sale is for a limited time. That's a great deal. Thanks. Call 888-4-CHAMPION or schedule your free in-home estimate online today. For over 20 years, Top Hat has partnered with Cozy Heat to bring our customers fantastic fireplaces. Cozy Heat is a family-owned business offering a complete line of traditional and contemporary fireplaces with stylish accessories to complement any decor. Cozy prides itself on making the most realistic flame patterns and log sets. Adding a fireplace is one of the best ways to increase the value of your home. Come visit our friendly showrooms in Madison and Baraboo to see what Cozy Heat and Top Hat can do for you. Come on, Michael, come on. Catch the ball! Huddle up! Do you need to get your eyes checked? Well, actually... Here's the play. Stanton Optical makes glasses in 30 minutes. It's easy on three. One, two, three. Easy! easy. Hut. Hut! Come on, Michael, you got this! Come on, come on, turn! Michael, catch! I can see! You did it! I did it! 30 minute glasses? Now that's an easy play. Stanton Optical. Easy's our thing. Watch the Bucks on broadcast TV when they battle with the Lakers on your new local home for select Bucks games. Don't miss a second of the action when LeBron and the Lake Show duel with Giannis and the Bucks. It's a clash of the Titans. Bucks, Lakers on your new local home for select Milwaukee Bucks games. Friday at 9 on WISC TV3. New at 5, Vice President Kamala Harris visits Madison. Hear her plans for winning the state against Donald Trump. Then we speak to the local Democratic voters rallying behind the VP. What they expect as the election approaches next at 5. On the next Wisconsin Huddle, Tyler Waugh chats with Zach before the Big Ten Tournament. Then Zach challenges Gus Yaldin to an intense game of giant Jenga. Friday night at 6.30 on the next Wisconsin Huddle. 
Welcome back. TikTok is under scrutiny again due to national security concerns posed by its Chinese ownership. New bipartisan legislation introduced by House committee leaders would force the app to divest from its parent company, Chinese-owned ByteDance, or be banned in the U.S. Now, the app has more than 170 million U.S. users, ranging from local business owners and even political campaigns. Republican Representative Mike Gallagher from Wisconsin says the goal is to ensure the app separates from its Chinese parent company so it can actually stay in the U.S. The bill, which still has several hurdles before it becomes law, will face its first committee vote tomorrow. Well, Boeing has reportedly failed to turn over key documents in the investigation into the door plug blowout on an Alaska Airlines flight earlier this year. Investigators believe Boeing employees removed critical bolts that hold the plug in place, but did not reinstall the bolts. The NTSB chair says Boeing told the NTSB it can't find any records about the removal and reinstallation of the door plug. Boeing did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Today, Delta Airlines hikes the price of checking a bag by $5 now to $35. The charge for an additional bag is now $45, also $5 more than before. Both United and American Airlines boosted their baggage fees last month, but raising costs to check lug check luggage is something Delta has not done since 2018. We'll be right back. Can your roof handle our Wisconsin winters? If you're tired of repairing leaks and replacing shingles after each storm, call us, the metal experts at Sweeta Metal Roofing. Sweeta Metal Roofing, the last roof you'll ever need. Interested in an electric vehicle? Bergstrom has the largest selection of electric vehicles and a team you can trust. Buy with confidence and complete peace of mind from Wisconsin's number one automotive retailer. Bergstrom Automotive, driven to deliver gas, hybrid, or electric. Spectrum Internet delivers with fast and reliable speeds nationwide. So there's never been a better time to switch to Spectrum. Now get Spectrum Internet for $49.99 a month. Plus advanced Wi-Fi and a Spectrum Mobile Unlimited line free for 12 months. Visit Spectrum.com or call 844-242-1479. Spectrum Internet offers speed and reliability, while advanced Wi-Fi gives you best-in-class security and privacy for all your connected devices. And Spectrum Mobile delivers unlimited talk, text, and data with nationwide 5G included. Switch now and get Spectrum Internet for $49.99 with advanced Wi-Fi and one line of Spectrum Mobile Unlimited free for 12 months. Start saving today. Go to Spectrum.com, a Spectrum store, call 844-242-1479 or scan the call now. replacement window season. Do you have ugly, hard to open, drafty windows? Now is the best time to buy new Champion windows. Because when you buy two, you get two free. Buy two Champion windows, get, get two, two free? free? I guess that means if you buy four, you get, you get four, four free. free. Buy six, get, get six, six free. free. Buy 10, get, get 10, 10 free. free. Hurry, Champion's buy two, get two free sale is for a limited time. Great job, everybody. Thanks. Thanks. Call 888-4-CHAMPION or schedule your free in-home estimate online today. That wraps up today's Live at Four. Stick around for News 3 Now at 5. Here's what to expect in our coverage moving forward. New on Channel3000.com from 16 potential names just down to 8. The new Madison top-level women's fast-pitch softball team is continuing its efforts to officially name the franchise. Just download our news app for that story and much more. And next at 5, News 3 Now's coverage continues on the vice president's trip to Wisconsin. More from acting Labor Secretary Julie Sue only on 3. Thanks for joining Live at 4, and we hope to see you right back here tomorrow. News 3 Now at 5 starts now.